So around seven months ago, I rode the Free Night Planetary Free Coaster for the first time ever. And in that time, I made a whole bunch of videos about this thing, asking if it was a game-changing free coaster. Because if you guys didn't know, this is the only free coaster available right now that you don't have to disengage or re-engage. And I'll show you what that means right now. I have examples from previous videos, and I'm going to try to illustrate it right now. So you can hear it clicking right now as a cassette. I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to let go of it, as you can see, we're just going to spin it backwards. I haven't done anything, I'm just free coasting now. And as you'll see, the driver actually moves itself the opposite way. So um, we're free coasting, now let's go forward again. You can hear the clicking again, that means it's back in cassette mode. I didn't have to disengage it or re-engage it. And with this came the question of whether or not this free coaster was actually game changing. I mean, we hadn't seen anything like this before. It's a cassette and a free coaster at the same time, which we have seen before, but we hadn't seen in that, or in free coasters in general, is one that you didn't have to disengage or re-engage. What I mean by disengage and re-engage is just having to back pedal and forward pedal to disengage or re-engage the hub. So before you go fakie with conventional free coasters, you have to do somewhat of a back pedal to disengage the hub and allow it to free coast. And that means whenever you go forwards again, you have to re-engage it by pulling the slack out, which normally means pedaling forward as much as you have set in order to re-engage the hub and allow it to pedal forwards again. So with this hub, you don't have to do any of that and it does it kind of in a way that feels impossible and like magic, which I've made videos about previously. And in this video, and since that seven months has gone by, I've had so many people asking me about this hub, whether it's in person or online, and lately I've had a ton of questions on if I'm still riding it and what I think of it now that I've ridden it for so long. And here is the full review video. And with that, I thought, since my thoughts on this thing are pretty simple, to be honest, I could take it apart again for the first time since the last video where I took it apart and showed the internals and show just what this thing looks like on the inside and maybe even give you guys an idea of whether or not you should buy it. And with that, it's gonna be pretty casual. So let's take apart the hardware from the hub. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you guys and I'll give you my thoughts right now, right off the bat. This free coaster is amazing. I absolutely love it and I would not be riding a free coaster without it. Is it game changing? We'll have to find that out after we take it apart. And while we're doing this, let's talk about any maintenance issues or anything that I've ran into with this hub. The honest truth is that the only issues that I've run into with this hub are from not having the cone spacers tight enough. There was a little bit of a wobble, but it's because the non-drive side cone spacer came a little bit loose and all I had to do is tighten it up. And the only issues that I've heard of anyone having are from having way too loose of cone nuts. I had one friend who had an issue where it wouldn't in, like pedal forwards or fakie or do anything, and it was because his cone spacer was way too loose, he said. Like, way looser than anyone would ever think it could get. So, I haven't heard of any issues with it. I haven't had any issues with it. I guess before we start taking things apart, let's see if the axle is still straight, usually whenever you spin it in this position, you can tell if it's bent, which it looks perfectly straight to me. And I don't know if you guys can really tell there or not, but it looks perfect. I did do the axle mod, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see in there or not, especially if the camera focuses. So you can see the tube in the axle it's on both sides. I have a video on that as well, and there's an entire playlist of these videos. I did that because I wasn't totally sure of the hollow axle because I've broken so many in my time riding BMX. But let's get this driver off of here. Another thing to keep in mind with this hub is that when you get it new, there is 100% a break-in period with the hub. What that means is that you have to ride it and continue riding it to break the hub in in order for it to work the way that it's supposed to. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, when I first got this hub and I rode it for the first time ever, I thought that it was just, it wasn't working the way that it was supposed to. I thought that, oh man, I don't know about this thing. 
but my thoughts on breaking it in were also just taking two laps around the skate park and being like, oh, it's probably good. No, it actually takes around 10 hours to break this hub in. So any of you who've bought this thing and I've had people ask me about this, they have run into this. You have to break it in and you have to ride this thing for around 10 hours for it to work properly. And since that break-in period, the amount of times that this hub has unintentionally engaged on me has been so few. It's a rare thing to happen and usually when it happens is whenever I'm moving extremely slow or because of the way that this thing works, a situation where the wheel is completely stopped and then I land fakie. A perfect example of this is an abubica. Whenever it comes to an abubica, your tire is completely stopped. I mean, obviously you're pulling the brakes to stop on your back tire. So when you go to hop in, your wheel isn't moving and you land and there's a chance that it will stay engaged. And that's because the way this hub works is that it relies on momentum to go back and forth. At least that's the way that I perceive it. So you've got the hub moving forward and cassetting and the only way for it to really efficiently go into free coast mode is to be moving forward like this. If it's just stopped and you pull it backwards, it's going to be engaged because I believe that the forward momentum is what allows the planetary gearing in this hub to do its job. So on an Abubica or any other trick like an ice to fakie where my back wheel is completely stopped, on my way back in before I land, I will give the tiniest little forward crank possible. Just enough to get the wheel moving again before it lands fakey. And I know you guys are probably sitting here watching like, take the driver out already. We wanna see the inside. So let's look at the inside. And we're just gonna pull this driver out. Boom, there we go. All right. Here's the driver, just like I suspected and just like in the first video. It looks exactly the way that it did when it was new. Literally, there's no change. I can put in old footage here from when they first took it out and showed it in that video. The internal looks exactly the same. So we'll set that aside. Now let's pull out the planetary clutch system. Pull it all out as one piece because I don't really wanna take this apart yet. And here's the insides of the cassette area. I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, or how close you can see it, but it looks just like it did when it was new. Let's see how zoomed in we can get here. Aside from being a little bit dirty, the teeth look great, everything looks great. So, the driver's good. The teeth on the inside, Ratcheting ring is good. What about the planetary clutch setup that we've got here? Let's see what this thing looks like on the inside. Boink. Once again, guys, it looks exactly like it did the first time I took it apart. I see no issues with that. And like I was told by the people at Free Night, this is to be expected because this planetary clutch system right here does not experience any forces on it. All it's there to do is raise and lower the paws, or raise the paws really, and allow the paws to lower. I am seeing one little spot of wear here. So this one little spot of wear here, that's all I'm seeing. And it's not even really like, it doesn't even look like it's anything. And the other ones look perfect. It seems pretty definitive. This hub is the real deal. The internals of it still appear to be perfect even after seven months of hard riding on it. If you've seen the previous videos, I purposefully engaged it like hard and just made it engage. So as far as durability goes, I think the hub's going to last. And I think that this is what a lot of people were waiting on. So I'm going to put it back together here. It does go to together in a very specific way. But honestly, that was the first time I'd taken this thing apart since the last video that I made on it. And I'm, I'm not surprised. It doesn't feel any different when I ride it. It doesn't seem like anything has changed whatsoever. So I'm really honestly not surprised to see that it's still perfect. I'm just excited that now that I've taken this thing apart after seven months, there's really no question 
on whether or not this hub is legit. Whether or not it's a game changer, I think is up to you guys. For me, it is absolutely a game changer. It completely changed the way that I do fakie tricks. They went from being a means to an end for a trick and just a way to get out of landing something is say I do an ice pick variation to fakie, the half cab and the fakie were just how to get out of that trick. Now, they actually feel like they're part of the trick. They feel good, they feel like they look good, they feel like they made me ride smoother with fakie tricks. I can do tricks out of and in fakies that I never could have done before with a cassette, and that was immediately apparent. I have done several things that I was really, really excited about that I never, ever could have done on a cassette. And the fact that I can do it with this hub and then go to the trails and pedal it forward, and if I end up having to for some crazy reason pedal between jumps, I know you're not supposed to, but if you end up having to or doing it out of instinct, I'm not gonna die because of slack or anything like that. What I will say about this hub is that it's absolutely not for everyone because there's certain situations that you just can't use pedal pressure on this hub. For instance, anytime you're doing some sort of brakeless spinning back wheel trick, say a five tap on a quarter or a 360 tap on flat ground, it is going to be a free coaster no matter what. There are situations where a buddy of mine did a 270 tap over a hip at a skate park and somehow he ended up with pedal pressure but he couldn't duplicate it other than those few tries and every single other time after that it was a free coaster upon landing in that back tire motion. And that's where the trade-off aspect of this hub comes into play. If you're okay with trading the ability to use pedal pressure on your back wheel spinning around in tricks like three taps and five taps for having a unlimited slack free coaster, then maybe it is a game changer for you. For me, I never use pedal pressure for anything. I've had brakes since I started riding. That means I've been using my brakes for everything since I started riding. I don't use pedal pressure on tire taps or anything like that. So I don't have to worry about it. For me, this is the perfect hub and it is a game changer. And that's not to say that things like manual 180s or full cabs using pedal pressure are completely impossible. As long as you're moving forward with this hub, it's in cassette mode. So if you pivot around in a full cab and end up moving forward a little bit before you spin that 180 to get to fakie again, you're gonna have pedal pressure. On a manual 180, if you're moving forward, you're gonna have that pedal pressure. You can still ride wheelies. Think about it that way. You can still ride a wheelie, which means that if you're moving forward to do a manual 180 and you use that pedal pressure to pop you out of it, it's still going to work. There's just a few certain situations and certain tricks that work only like a free coaster, unlike the other cassette free coaster options. Like with the Z coaster, you can choose to keep it engaged for things like tire taps and three taps. This hub does not give you the option to keep it engaged. And like I said, that gives you a trade-off that you have to decide from. And I think for a lot of people, not having to ever worry about having this hub engage on you while you're riding fakie is huge. And I know that's a frustration that a lot of people have with conventional free coasters. With the Free Night Planetary Free Coaster, you shouldn't ever have to worry about that because as long as you're moving backwards in a fakie, you have to force this thing to engage. You have to really crank forward and no accidental foot twitches are going to instantly engage this hub and whatever would happen after that on a conventional free coaster. One aspect of this hub that could be perceived as game changing is the fact that while you're riding fakie with this thing, it has unlimited slack. What do I mean by that? Literally, while you're faking, you can pedal forwards with this hub as long as you don't pedal too hard. So what that means for people who ride free coasters is that you don't have to worry about that foot twitch engaging your hub on accident. You can literally pedal forwards a little bit and adjust your feet and do whatever you need to and never have to worry about this hub engaging as long as you're moving backwards in a fakie. And that is huge. While we're on the topic of conventional free coaster hubs, let's talk about the different nuances and things you have to worry about with them that you don't have to worry about with this hub. For one, some free coasters have plastic bushings in them that break and wear, and when they wear, they can make your whole wheel feel wobbly and loose. You don't have to worry about this with this hub because every piece of axle within the hub itself is taken up by some piece of metal. That planetary clutch assembly has an aluminum spacer in it so that there's no chance of wobble or wear in there, 
and then you've got your driver which is all bearings and then you've got your cone nut on this side just bearings on this side and cone nut on there so there's no possibility unless something goes catastrophically wrong for this hub to wear on the inside and make it loose another thing is just the general maintenance of conventional free coaster hubs i had a friend who had one that rode trails and he said he had to, he had to take it apart all the time and re-grease it because there would be dirt in there and I've heard of people having to take their coasters apart and just maintenance them and make sure that they're not going to break basically. I haven't taken this thing apart whatsoever since I got it other than for the videos that I've made. I've just ridden my bike and that is my favorite thing about this free coaster. I just get on my bike and ride it. I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I don't have to think about disengaging it or the fact that after I turn a fakie around, I'm gonna have to worry about slamming my knee on the stem because I'm the kind of person who forgets about slack and would just die all the time. I just ride my bike and I love that about this hub. And as I've said in previous videos, my only real worry about this hub was the hollow axle on it. Since I put that tubing in the axle, I haven't had to worry about it. And as you guys saw, it was perfectly straight. And since I took it apart and everything was perfect internally, my worries about this hub are completely resolved. I have no worries and I plan on riding this exact hub as long as it holds up. And the way that it's held up in the last seven months is any indication, it's going to last years into the future. And I am so happy to say that and bring this information to you guys. And I can definitively say without a shadow of a doubt that I never want to ride another hub ever, unless it's got the exact same style of cassette free coaster, no disengagement or re-engagement needed. This is the only hub that I want to ride. So with that being said, the question of whether or not this free coaster is game changing can only be answered by the person who's going to ride it. If it fits your riding style and you're okay with the trade-offs or you don't have to worry about those trade-offs, then I think it's absolutely a game changer. For someone who likes to ride trails but also wants to have a free coaster and never worry about catching the slack or re-engaging a free coaster, this can be a game changer for you. For someone who likes to use that pedal pressure in a tire tap or a back wheel spinning trick, this might not be the hub for you unless you're okay with that trade-off. And that's just the nature of BMX products in general. I know there's a lot of people when this came out that acted like it shouldn't exist because it didn't fit their style of riding. But the truth of the matter is that there's people out there like me who this hub is absolutely perfect for. And just because something doesn't work perfectly with your riding style doesn't mean that it shouldn't exist or that it doesn't work perfectly with someone else's. That's why it's called Freestyle. And that's where I wanna leave this one. I wanna thank Free Knight for providing me with this hub to ride and make videos about for all of you to watch. I hope that this was informative and maybe helped some of you who are on the fence on whether or not you should buy this hub. And if you want more information, like I said, I've got tons of other videos about this thing. I'm sure there's a playlist on the screen right here for you to click if you wanna see more. Thank you for watching. If you found your way here from somewhere else, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, let me know what you guys think about this hub because I absolutely love it. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for another one. Goodbye.